Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Guitar of the Day. I'm your host, Michael Lemo, and today it is a thumping Thursday. Woo! Yes, with my good friend and bass player, Greg Coates. Hey! What's up, Greg? Hey. Put the shirt on, I magically appeared. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it happens. You can teleport with that shirt. Yes, you can. Uh, but yeah, we also have a show coming up yes. uh, December 9th at the mint uh, i believe tickets are 12 bucks there's a link below if you're interested uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun rock out and uh angela petrilli's playing um we're on at eight i think we're on earlier yeah. this time and then she's on after us around nine ish so it's gonna be an eventful night and we're gonna have a lot of fun um how have you been greg we're good just uh trying to finish up a pile of repairs and trying to finish up a record and we got a lot uh, going on playing a bunch of crazy Ooh. gigs and uh got some fun stuff coming up you know uh, staying busy staying out of trouble staying healthy exactly good <laughs> well we have a really cool face i've never seen one of these before oh it's They're not terribly common no what's the name it is a, a spoiler spoiler, spoiler alert yeah spoiler alert <laughs> it's an how do you say it? Alembic. Alembic yes. spoiler. Wow. This is 1984, we believe. Yeah, this is kind of, and it's a medium scale, which is really cool. So it's got a little bit, little, little bit of give, rather than the the, the high tension feel of a, a long scale bass. Um, obviously, this reminds would remind a lot of people who were familiar with John and Twistle from the Who of uh, his spoiler bass that would have had a, a, a spider web. Uh, like inlay i think brass inlay on the upper horn or wow. the bottom horn then but uh really the king and daddy of custom made bases really these guys were kind of it they uh ron wickersham and uh uh rick turner basically uh were like the two main people that uh, got a lembic going this is a kind of a straight ahead one this has just got a volume tone a, a four-way selector with a mute switch on it and uh, the Q tone control, which gives you a huge wide range of tonal capabilities. Oh, Milled brass, yeah, really adjustable brass nuts. So you're yeah, not, check that out. Which is really cool. So if you change string gauges, you don't have to cut a new nut or anything like that. Really well thought out. Mahogany back and sides and a three-piece three uh, maple neck all Ooh. the way through. Wow. So this, this thing is a aggressive, resonant, like, Full of attack. Is that ebony board? That's an ebony board. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't mess around. They, wow. they went all top-notch stuff. Shallow tuners, you know, just a, a really, you know, top of the line, custom-made instrument. And they're still at it. And uh, yeah, they're they're definitely Stanley Clark, uh, one of the yep. people who was a, obviously had his own signature model with a uh, with a Lembic. Um, yeah, really, uh, really great, great instruments. They make guitars as well too. So that's cool. That Stanley played one too. He came through the store, and it uh, was very cool to hang out with. Yeah. Um, but I also love the like the kind of oval inlays are really cool too. Yeah, these, um, these guys did lighting like LED markers, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Like Eighteen thousand different switches and preamps and EQ stuff. I mean, this is a pretty straight ahead model compared to what I've seen from Alembic. Wow. Yeah, and it's cool that they kind of do like the Mose right thing where they put the serial number on the fretboard. Yep. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, it's, it's cool. It's Would you mind taking it out front? Oh man, this thing's gonna be fun. We'll see if Let's I can do it. See if I can summon some ox presence. Good to have you back, Greg. <laughs> Let's do this. See you guys on the ninth. Woo! Hey everybody, this is Greg here at Norm's Rare Guitars with a very special Alembic spoiler bass from the early 80s, I believe 1984. Very cool, mostly uh, associated with John and Twistle and uh, kind of late 70s, early 80s period of the Who. Uh, very cool bass. This one actually happens to be a 32 inch scale, a medium scale bass. Uh, and it's got some pretty basic controls, I mean, compared to a lot of Alembics. Uh, Alembic was kind of the first really boutique electric bass manufacturer. Uh, Ron Wickersham, who has uh, designed a lot of electronics for uh, Jack Cassidy from uh, Jefferson Starship. Uh, airplane, sorry. <laughs> Later on, Starship uh, did a lot of crazy effects back then just to kind of get a lot of different tones back when the music was evolving so much but that was a, a major contribute contribution to uh, the Alembic company. Uh, Rick Turner came along uh, uh, later and uh, also uh, aided in the construction and design of a bunch of instruments and uh, people like Stanley Clark, obviously John Entwistle and a number of other, uh, Jimmy Johnson I think was, uh, you know, played Alan Holdsworth, played a, one of the first or earliest five strings made by them as well. Um, anyway, really cool bass, big Who fan, so this is cool for me to play one of these. I've actually never seen one of these in, in uh, person. And it being a medium scale is kind of unusual. Usually they're long scale a lot of times, but it being a custom made company, you could get anything you wanted basically. So uh, yeah, this is again, this is the spoiler by Alembic. Uh, we'll take it through the, the controls here. There's a first thing, is there, there's a mute switch, so 
If you didn't want to make any noise and you want to go grab a taco, you could. <laughs> You've got your uh, neck position here. And these are all active electronics driven by a, a single nine volt, uh, nine volt battery. Um, basically volume and tone. And the tone is actually what they call a Q effect. And it's, it's a couple different bands on it. You can kind of hear how it works in conjunction with a neck pickup. It's got a little bit wider sweep and you switch this down to different frequency all together as far as a little brighter. So it's not quite as much of a dip. But you can do it almost like a wah effect. So it's got a little bit more uh, elaborate tone control built into this. And then uh, that's the neck pickup and bridge. So we'll, we'll play a little bit on the neck pickup first. beautiful piece of ebony. There's a few things about this that are really should be made note of, and one of them being an adjustable brass nut. So you're able to actually change your height at the first fret and uh, as far as the playability goes from different string gauges, that kind of thing, without having to have a new one made. Uh, a lot of really cool appointments. Again, they manufactured their own bridge design and tail pieces, uh, and these active electronics were some of the first ever made, if not, if not the first ever made. So again, neck pickup. Both of these here, a lot more aggressive, a lot more, a lot more growl, and that, that really aggressive tone that a lot of people associate with John Entwistle's playing in particular, as well as like Stanley Clark. Very aggressive, real modern kind of sounding, a lot of attack, a lot of presence, and a ton of sustain because it's neck through body bass as well. Really nice uh, body wings, uh, solid mahogany, three-piece maple neck all the way through, and uh, you know, just notes for days. present in your face and that's of course very much associated with John Entwistle being probably you know as he was referred to as the ox sounded like an ox stepping on your face that's what this bass sounds like too <laughs> both pickups in the middle position there and obviously with the the way the tone control works with a huge sweep and it's adjustable you can get some really mellow tones out of that kind of thing too depending upon the kind of music you're playing obviously the shape kind of indicates what you're gonna play <laughs> As far as this kind of instrument, probably not going to see someone playing a jazz casual with this bass, <laughs> but it's a lot of fun and it's very aggressive looking and sounding. Uh, this is with the tone rolled back in the middle position of both pickups. Tons of 
presence, tons of sustain. Spoiler, 1984 from what it, the number is telling us. Uh, now if you want to make a statement, this is definitely a bass to own. <laughs> All kinds of really cool tones. <laughs> um, really easy to play. The neck's just like ridiculous. It's like the best fretwork you'll possibly see. Ebony fingerboard really gives you a great, great amount of sustain and clarity and evenness. It's a monster of tone and definitely uh, even at the uh, medium scale, it's got a little bit more flexibility in the string. So definitely uh, worth checking out here. Not something you're going to see every day. Um, and uh, you know, it'll definitely uh, give you an identity as a player if you pick this up and strap it on on stage. So uh, come on down to Norms and check this out. It's a 1984 Alembic spoiler bass. Bye. Right. <laughs> now, okay. now, to promote 